We are live now, I believe. Hello, everyone. I am Anastasia. Let me know if you are able to see me and hear me. I hope it's all well. This is my first time I'm doing live on YouTube with Google. Asia, let me know if you are able. Okay. <laughs> um, so once again i'm really excited to see you all and usually i did my live streams a little bit different way so this is going to be my first one and i really hope it will work out well now just a moment i will update the page so i will be able to read your comments feel free to ask questions so today's topic will be top fears of beginner nail techs and not necessarily beginner like maybe of all kinds of nail techs and the reason I decided to bring this topic up because I receive many letters, many messages from you daily. And usually they have different fears and concerns, which um, the age or um, the funds or any other questions. Like um, recently I received a letter and it wasn't even once, it was like, few letters from different people from different countries and with a different age and they go like this like hello my name is something and um i like nail so much i really enjoy it a lot but i'm not sure that i will be able to do this because i am already 25 and uh you know it sounds so um um I don't know unusual to me because uh have you ever been in a situation when somebody who's way younger than you let's say if you are 25 then somebody who's just 20 just turned turned 20 on her birthday and she's like oh my god i'm so old and you feel like wait what if you're old then i'm what like one leg in the grave <laughs> so that's about how i feel when i receive these questions um i mean there's no such Thing as perfect age for this profession hello germany hello scotland main usa puerto rico hello hello everyone um come join so uh, what i'm saying is okay if you are 10 or if you're 15 then you still can do it already i mean there are so many videos on youtube you can already start to do something to work with your friends if you are 20 then there's no problem at all just go and do it if you're 30 same thing you probably already have some experience in some other jobs probably and you can use it for the nail industry if you're 40 or 50 same thing you probably already have some experience in with working with people communicating with them then why don't you use this experience to succeed in the nail industry i had students um recently there was one student she was 63 and she did great actually so i don't see any problems with the age and it should not be a concern and it's not a secret that some things in our life they are definitely limited by our age let's say it's really hard to become like olympic champion if you are 40 now and you just decided to start doing sports let's say rhythmic gymnastics right it's gonna be kind of hard or like it's not possible to give birth naturally to a child if person turned 70 because that's nature right but it has nothing to do with our industry here's the good news i mean if you are able to see if you have two arms and if you want it really bad age really doesn't matter i mean in every age there are different uh, opportunities so don't even think about it hello portugal new hampshire i graduated from nail school when i had just turned 60. wow good job i i now have my own nail suit and a spa see yeah that's why i told you oh maybe you guys are all confident already you don't even need those advice but th that's actually great so i hope the age will not be a concern or fear or problem anymore now let's go to the next one so i decided to bring age first because this is the really the most frequent asked questions that i receive like almost every day 
So the next fear I also receive pretty often is about what if I can't do it? And again, the letter is usually like it describes different life situations like um, I live here and this is my age and these are my circumstances and you know I'm really not sure if I can do it and the thing is if even if you will send me all detailed information about all your life all your experience I still cannot give you an answer because I can predict future right I really don't know if you're if you will succeed and if you will be able to do it because nobody does I mean, even if you will ask your parent or a close person, friend, anyone, they also cannot give you an exact answer. Uh, so there's really no point of thinking about it, then just try and figure out that by yourself, right? So let's say we're trying to predict weather in 100 years, like in this city. It's not possible, right? Because we have no idea what's gonna happen in 100 years. Uh, but unlike weather, with your life and experience, this is something on you, on what you can do with it. I mean, if you um, push effort right now, if you will work for it, then you, you will succeed and you will be able to do it. So don't waste your time thinking, you know, overthinking many times, analyzing. Just go do it and you will succeed. I mean, this concern, they really kill our motivation and energy. Hello, Slovakia. Now I'm almost 64. Wow, Sherry, so it's been just four years and you opened your salon, that, right? That, that's awesome. Great job. I'm opening my home salon in March. I'm terrified and excited. I can totally understand that these feelings, they usually come together. Long time nail artist, but I always get nervous talking on new clients. I really want to succeed. Audrey, that's great. I mean, if you want to succeed and according to your message, I can tell that you want it real bad, then it's not a problem. And about talking on new clients, I have a tip. So, okay. Um, let's imagine i mean we all get nervous when we talk to different people and that's fine i mean especially when it's let's say we are want to get a new job or it's a new client we always feel kind of you know terrified right but think about it just for a moment the person in front of you is just another person it's the same human being right with their own fears concerns problems troubles insecurities right it's just the way it is so just think about it and i mean it's just another person and i don't know breathe out and keep working usually it helps me when i, I get nervous you know in front of some people when i have you know to do some things i've never done before maybe it will be helpful hello miami florida hello slovakia nice Okay, so um, this second concern regarding what if I will not succeed really is pointless because why think about things that we cannot really um, predict rather than just go and build your future by yourself. Oh, hi, Leslie. Just wanted to say a quick thank you for sharing my work on an Academy Instagram page. It really helps my confidence. You're welcome, Leslie. And, and that's great. I actually haven't even thought about it, that it will help to build confidence, but that's nice. Um, okay, so the next popular fear and concern is about I don't have funds. Of course, if you are thinking of starting something new and nail industry might be new to you, you will need some funds. And uh, I started, I had about... I think it's about hundred dollars for today's money um that's all i had and it was enough to take few classes and then when i had my first client uh she paid like thirty dollars i think and i took this thirty dollars and went to the nail supply shop uh, to buy more products because i literally had you know just like five colors of regular nail polish so then I had this other client and again, I invested all this money in the products again. So it's always hard at the beginning. It's always like that. And you will definitely need some funds when you're starting. Maybe you can get a loan or ask your husband or if you have your another job right now, maybe you can have it from your job. Um, but then 
if you will you know really try hard and work and you know really like invest money again in your business until you will build enough um like when you will do your home salon the way you want it uh when you will get supplies all you need well that's actually pointless is this possible to have all supplies that we need probably not but you know at least some supplies that you're comfortable working with and then you know then you will start make more money and earn from it um so i'm not saying that no you can start with zero dollars of course not that's life we still need funds to get started but it's not really you know so crazy funds it's not the same like becoming a lawyer or a doctor really we don't need that much money to get started um hello ohio hello hello jessica okay so uh regarding the funds i mean i understand this concern completely and this concern is actually not only with the beginner nail tax if you want to start something new like open salon um open your school take part in a competition anything that involves uh, changes people are usually have this concern and my best advice here is planning just plan for it just make a list of what you will need let's say okay now you first of all you will need to go to school right so you will have this um, school expenses then you will need to buy some products also write down the list and uh, find on the internet how much they cost so you'll have um, you know a plan so when you plan it's a lot easier and I recommend the same for any nail technicians if even if you're not just beginning just plan all your nail shopping all your expenses and it will be so much easier I will be turning 27 and I've been practicing on my own and collecting over the years, but I plan on going to school. I just love doing nails and I think I finally found my calling. Congratulations. Actually, if you feel like you like you found your calling, then there's no way you will not succeed seriously. I mean, um, you probably some of you know how it feels like when you're doing the job you don't really like because I was there too, not for long, but for a few months in the office. And I remember that my favorite part in this job was lunch break, because lunches were just great. And I remember I had this clock in front of my desk and I was, you know, just looking at them, okay, one hour before lunch. Oh my God. And then after lunch, I was counting hours when I will finally go home. So it's not really fun. And if you found your calling and you don't even notice how time flies when you're doing it and when you're working, it's a great thing. You know, like there's a quote which says, find um, a hobby. Um, no, I'm not sure <laughs> I will uh, remember it now. Like something you need. So that the best job is the hobby when you get paid something like that um, so it's really great if you found found something that you love and you feel like it's your calling because you won't need to work anymore i mean you will have fun and get money for it right okay now let's go to the next concern and for those who are new here i will quickly sum it up so first concern was age which has nothing to do with our industry luckily we are not sports people or supermodels where age really matters it's really not an issue second one is what i if i can't do it just go there and do it no one can answer this question unless you build your future on your own next one is i don't have funds well you will need some funds but as you keep working just keep investing in your business and you will earn more okay so the next concern is uh, sometimes uh, people say something like okay well i spent like half of my life or all my life on this education and working on this another job let's say in a bank which i don't really like but still you know i and then i will go and work as a nail technician that doesn't sound you know like a good career well um i cannot really give an advice here because uh like i said if you feel like it's something you want to do if it's your calling 
then I recommend just go and do it. And I know how it feels when you spend on something a really long time and then you figure out that, well, this is not really I need to do. Well, it is uh, heartbreaking sometimes, right? And we feel sad about these years we lost in some ways. But on the other hand, just imagine that you will spend the rest of your life working at this job that you don't like. How does it feel? Not, not very good, probably. So it, it's sad if, if you like feel like you lost some time, but don't lose it anymore. So um, I can give an example. I don't know if it's suitable here, probably. So I decided to learn German language, and I spent about, I think, a year and a half learning it. And it was such a struggle for me, like seriously. I was taking classes usually at 6 a.m. because that's the only time I had. And I spent pretty much money on that and effort. And it was such a struggle for me. When I finally figured out that um, when I try to speak with German business people, they all speak English. So I was like, okay, I already spent that amount of money, that amount of time on learning this language. And... You know, I'm not such this kind of person who's like, okay, I will just drop it. No, I really like to finish everything, to finish projects, to read the book until the end. But then I realized, okay, then why should I keep spending time and money if I'm not really interested in this language anymore? I don't have this motivation anymore. So I, I just quit. And it's actually the same when you find a book boring, when you don't like the movie. Just switch the channel and, you know, and keep going, really. If you want to become, if you see yourself as a nail technician, then go. Or there's another option. Actually, if you have like a part-time job, you can try to work as a nail technician part-time and see, you know, like a test drive. If you will like it and you will see that this is something you feel like doing in the future, then go full-time. How long does it take to build a clientele? Pam, that's um, a good question. So... If you would ask me this question like a couple of years ago, I will always answer like six months usually. But now with the social media and everything, it changed. I think it's way faster. Actually, it is possible in three months. It's hard to do it that fast, but it's still possible. So I would say three to six months because that's usually the time when, you know, some Clients will be turned into returning customers. They will come over again and like your job. So if you are on the stage when you're building your clientele now, <coughs> excuse me, your main focus now should be on the service, on the quality of your work. So the client comes to your salon and now you have to do everything that is possible to make them stay, to turn them into returning customers. So, you know, do a good service, like, I don't know, coffee, tea, all the things, and do your job really well. And this is the only way to make them come over to you again and again. Um, sometimes it takes longer, and it really depends on a place where you're located. I mean, when I said three months, let's say if you are living in a city, which is really small and, you know, um, it, it should be a little bit harder or let's say you live in a big city but still you're um, decided to go to work in the salon which is located in such place which is really hard to find or to reach which is not close to any you know big um, streets or something like that it would be harder also, but it, today it's not only about the location if you will use all tools that you can, social media, word of mouth, uh, ads, um, you know, communicating with your friends and ask them to give recommendation that you're a nail technician. If you will do a business card, which you will hand to all people that give any compliments to your nails. And if you will do your nails all the time, that will work like an actual advertising, then it will be faster. So my long respond will be like three to seven months. Hello, Venezuela. Great to see you. Okay. So, um, 
how do you know how much to charge when you are new in the nail industry and feel that you take too long to do services? Nails by Chrissy. Thank you for this question. Um, yes, at the beginning, we usually do not work very fast and that's okay. So my suggestion is not, you should not charge, you know, too low. So there's always such thing as average price in your city. Uh, so I would say take an average price and uh, stick about the same level. So do not put it too low because in this case you will attract uh, clients that are used to low prices and you it will be extremely hard for you to change it. It also depends where you're working, if it's home or whether it's salon because it also depends. Uh, but I recommend to take an average price in your part of the city or in your city that would be reasonable because uh, I ha I've seen it many times that my students they were like oh my god I'm a beginner I'm so bad at my work I'm so slow so I will charge like 10 times less than the average in Moscow and they ended ended up they had only one-time clients you know like the ones that never come back and they had to deal with this client they're always late they always you know do a no-show appointments that they skip their appointments and so my suggestion is to start slowly build your clientele even if you're just getting started and the best way to do it is to take you know the price which is average and then slowly you can start to raise them and also to work faster you will try will you'll need to try to practice as often as you can so take um your friends your relatives practice on yourself so you can work faster and then you can um, do it better hello romania thank you um, okay, so another, uh, let's get back to our topic. Oh my God, sometimes you ask me a question and I like answer like, you know, read your half of encyclopedia. Um, so the next concern is, which I usually hear more often from people in Europe, I don't know why, in Eastern Europe and in Moscow where I'm from. Um, and I think it's also common to any people who live in a big cities. So what they say is, oh my God, there's so many nail techs out there already, talented and experienced. There's basically no space in there for me, like no clients. And <coughs> I don't know, I actually laugh at that because 13 years ago when I was starting, I thought exactly the same, that there are too many nail technicians out there. And the truth for today is, yes, ab absolutely, there are many nail techs who are talented, who are experienced, who, have, who are popular on Instagram, etc. Uh, but the thing is, even like in my city, I don't know, maybe it looks different from your side, but what I know, there are many nail techs, but not that many who are truly, you know, professional, dedicated, who can offer a great service. Um, and also there's such thing as, you know, every nail tech will find its own clients. Let me give an example. So recently I had a student, she's, uh, she just turned 18. She's like, I don't know, like people in 18 usually look like, you know, really young, like, I don't know, wild, motivated. And she likes all this teenage stuff. And most of her clients, they are like that. So they like all this new, I don't know, Snapchat, um, what's, what, what's the name of this teenage band? Oh, I forgot. Oh, well, oh, oh, you know, they really like the same things, this, the same kind of designs. They talk about the common topics, so they really get well along. So these are her clients. Also, I have another uh, friend of mine, she's a nail tech, and she's more, uh, you know, like just a calm, um, really educated person, and her clients are 
about the same. I mean, they're all also like business people or people who work in the big companies and they don't like the designs. They don't do them at all. They only do pink and white, you know, one tone application, short nails, no stilettos, no edge, no craziness on the nails. And, you know, they like her. So there will be always this type of client that work for you. So uh, you need to find your niche and also uh, I mean, if you will do your job really well, you will always have clients. Um, like now, if I go down the streets, you can see that, you know, pretty much most of the people, they're doing something with their nails. Like several years ago, it wasn't like that. We still could see people that really don't care about the color or the manicure. Now it changed. It's actually trending now. Nail designs, nail extensions, nail care. So this is actually a great time to start because not only that people are really doing it, also because of the opportunities that you have now. I mean, internet, social webs, you can learn from different people just by seeing at home online this is so great and i always keep uh, saying it, that I mean, i'm really jealous of you guys because when i was starting well especially back in russia there was no websites on my language where i could learn something so the only thing was to me to wait uh, for this beauty show which was once a year in moscow and it was so crowded that you literally had to hang over different people to see a small parts of this nail tutorials that some uh, educators were showing us and it felt like oh my god like i'm so happy because i'm able to watch it for free so i probably sound yeah like a grandma like that says in our times like internet and, and phone was not <laughs> like that but I mean it, it's true so really like take these opportunities because they're endless mm. okay we have a question here Mart friend I love doing nails and I'm pretty good at it and get many compliments and they ask if I could do their nails but I am scared to do other people's nails <laughs> can you motivate me to do it um okay so I suppose that you get compliments on your nails right and um what i can suggest that ask someone who you really trust to be your first client maybe your sister your mom your close friends anyone uh, someone you will not be afraid of and you're not embarrassed in front of right so just do this person's nails and you you know can have a friendly chat while doing this and i am sure it will not be as terrifying to you and then try doing some other people's nails i mean i you can do it as your test drive to you know to get used to this feeling and then just go and do other people's nails come on if you get compliments that means that people think that you are doing a great job and what else do, do you need right that's i think the greatest motivation and also if you like doing this that's you know thing number two so just go and do it i get asked all the time how does who does your nails oh hi jenny okay i tell them yeah so you just hand them your business card i oh i do them myself yeah that, that's what i thought that's and that's actually great when you get this kind of comment. So right now, I, st I think I have them, but when I used to be, you know, looking for clients, I always had my business cards and I also tried to do, you know, not just some nails, but something that people usually notice, like, you know, something really long or with glitter or actually even these short nails that I have now, people notice. So let me show you if you're following me on Instagram, you've probably seen this. So this is a QR code. And if you use the QR, QR scanner on your phone, you can actually uh, access to my website. So this is like a digital technological business card in the nail. Um, so if you will do something, you know, that catches people's attention, they're like, oh, wow, like I like your nails. Uh, even if, if they didn't ask like who's doing your nails, 
even if they just give you a compliment, I think it's okay to, you know, just hand out your business card. And yeah, if you want something like that, feel free to call me. Uh, I suppose I should go to school. Oh, yeah, if you haven't yet, starting a, going to school is a good way to start. But, but I mean, if you haven't yet uh, went to school and you already get compliments for your nails, this is great. I mean, um, you know, this is something like when you iPhone, uh, is not launched yet. I mean, we see all these ads and, you know, this line before it's even produced and still people want to buy it because they're waiting for it. So you have like the same, like people already want it even though you are not offering the services yet. I mean, it's great. It's actually the best way to start any kind of business. Okay, and we have questions from Zoe. What are your thoughts on offering free menus to attract new clients? Someone recommended that to me, but I wasn't sure that's a good start. I might do a monthly special instead, $10 off for February. Okay, great question. So my personal opinion is that you should not ever do anything for free. I repeat, never do anything for free. Um, because, I mean, if you were selling shoes, okay, uh, if you're a supplier of shoes, uh, it takes the same effort when you go, you know, to, to some special ale, you take three boxes of shoes instead of two and, the, and you can give a discount to this customer. That's okay. But we are doing the service. When you're doing the service, you spend the same time, the same amount of your effort, uh, the same amount of product, the same, you give your, the same amount of your health a little bit. So why should it be free? Uh, so I suggest uh, that you can offer a discount, like you said, yeah, some percent off, or you can give a, some gift, like, um, let's say, before holidays, designs are for free, or like, if you purchase extensions that you can get a spa treatment for free, or yeah, some percent off, but I totally am against doing your job completely free of charge the reason for that is that first of all like i said you spend your products uh, and time and if you're renting a booth let's say you also spend money on it so you need at least to fund that first and the another reason is you know even if you're in love with your job and when we're Oh, no, just getting started, we feel so excited. We're ready to work without sleep and rest for you know days and nights, and it feels okay. But honestly, if you don't get reward, which is money, for a while, it you know this motivation will drop, and you know I think it's you know a natural thing. So I suggest that free services is bad. Oh, okay, and there's actually another reason which I totally will not recommend it ever, is that people who will come to you because there's something for free, usually they don't stay. Oh, and actually I have another story I have why I had this experience with free services. So you probably heard this uh, such thing as Groupon.com, you know, like coupon sites where there you can get like terrific discounts on many things. So when it just uh, came to Russia, I tried it uh, to my services. And back then I was already doing classes. So I did like a two hour evening class for not for nail techs, you know, just to people who want to do their own nails. So we were drawing different things on the nails, on the tips. And Actually, they brought me many, many clients, that was true, but they never ever came back, they never purchased anything, they were just one-time clients. And one time I even heard the discussion between them, so they had a special um, forums where they discuss all these companies that give this discounts on this website and where should they go next. So then I realized that these are kind of people that are looking for this crazy discounts or free things, and this is the only thing they're interested in. They really don't want my quality. They're not interested in 
me as a professional that you know how much money and effort I put in my job they just want the free stuff so um, I mean you will not be able to build a clientele in this you only can do something for free if you want to try some new product or do something for your portfolio you know I call it nail models but even nail models usually pay a small fee but you know, this is the only thing that can be allowed to be free that's what I think uh, I have another question. Madeline, I want to go to school, but how do you know which one is a good school? Great question. So tips on choosing a good school. Uh, first is pretty obvious is just find a feedback. Uh, just Google any feedbacks from the real people and maybe they have some names of the graduates and you can contact them directly. And, you know, usually uh, on the websites, all feedback, it's pretty good. Like, I enjoyed it a lot. This is a great school. But maybe if you will try to contact these people, um, you know, directly, maybe it's for Facebook or some way else, uh, you can ask them certain questions that you're interested in. The second tip is go just go there directly and speak to the teachers. That's usually what helps. Um, in my school, sometimes uh, people come to me and just talk to me in person, and usually they stay. Um, and also, I would recommend, you know, just to look in their program and check how many hours they um, give you with practice. Because theory is important, uh, for sure, but if there will be not enough practice, you will just don't feel confident after finishing the school. So also check their program and make sure they give enough practice, enough models, enough hours on the practical part. And I mean, of course, I don't have recommendations for every country um, for a good school, but, but I'm sure there are many, many good schools out there. And also I usually look for not just school, but for an um, educator. Uh, it's very rare, it happens, but not as much when the school is so great that every single educator is just great there. But usually, well, right now, I'm actually still learning, just like you, and visiting different nail classes. So I just look for exact uh, instructor, educator I'm interested in. And once I like her or his style, works and I feel like that's something I want to do a person I want to learn from I just go there it really doesn't matter which country or city the person's at um okay so um let's sum up our fears and concerns and you, if you have more fears concerns or actually questions on any topic feel free to ask them because I have about 10 minutes more and we can just chat. So the first concern was about age, don't worry about it. Uh, the second was if you cannot do this, just go and do it, just feel confident. Um, you will need some funds and you just need to invest in your business at the beginning and it's okay, actually it happens with any kinds of business. Can you imagine doing something new without having money for it? That just the way new beginnings usually work. Um, another concern is that you already spend enough time uh, and part, of, you know, some part of your life and money on something different, and then you realize that now you want to do nails. Well, it's okay, you know. Actually, have you probably heard of it that there are many people who haven't um, found their calling? Uh, you know, I was. Um, going to acting class in LA last week and there was um, this I, a quote or fact I don't really know but I was really touched with it it was it was something like 90% of people die with their dream unfulfilled and this is, sounds so heartbreaking um, and I don't know really if it's true or not but regardless of that uh, if you 
feel like you found your dream or calling, just go for it. And I know it's easier to say rather than do because I had this feeling a lot also. And as we get older, we get more conservative and we're like, well, I'm not that open to opportunities. Come on, I have mortgage for the house. I have family. I have, you know, credits to pay. Um, but still, if you think about it, sometimes it's, you know, it's still possible. Like if you feel like want you something you want to do, why not just try it? And the last concern was there are so many nail technicians out there already. There's just not enough space for me. Well, if you're going to be not mediocre, but you know, really expert professional, the person who loves his job. Come on, there is a place for you, actually tons of it. Have you ever been to a dentist or a doctor? Well, maybe that's not a very good example. You know, to any kind of specialist that's really in love with his or her job, you can actually feel it, like with how much passion they give it. So, I mean, these kind of people, they're always uh, attract clients, you know, they will be always popular among the clients. And if you plan to be someone like this, then there's definitely many clients out there waiting for you right now. We have a question from Lady Lotus. My main problem is making sure I have enough products on board. What would you say are the main things you absolutely have to have just starting out? Um, that's a great question. So on my channel, I have uh, a video that is called 18 colors to get started. And the, this is the colors that I recommend to have if you want to have enough colors for gel polishes, gels, or regular nail polishes. And also, uh, in a few weeks, well, hopefully not weeks, in a few days, there will be a new video I created for you regarding acrylic products, like the minimum list of acrylic products you will need to get started. And let me know if you will need the same thing for gel, I can do it. Um, so it depends on what you're going to do. Let's say if you want to do acrylic extensions, then you just need to have monomer powder, uh, brush, and it, you know, just two to three colors. Actually, that's okay to get started. And other implements like files, day pen dish, um, napkins. Well, I'm afraid I will miss something if I will just take it through my head. Um, but this video is coming up soon and I will definitely make the list of all the products that you need. And also on nsiacademy.com, the link is under this video, uh, there's the free webinar which is called... Um, which is called... <laughs> I think it's a need for speed. And it's free. You can watch it completely for free. All you need to do is just to register on this website. And I also gave a list of the products that you need, both for acrylic and gel. So if you register there, also feel free to watch it. Hey, everyone. Oh, hello. Um, yes, this question was answered. But don't worry, because I will leave this video right here. And when I will finish, it will stay right here. And then you can... Just rewind it and watch it all over again. So don't feel bad if you missed it. You will have an opportunity to watch it over and over again. Um, so I think that's it. And a quick uh, announcement. Next week, um, starting on 27th of January, I will be attending Ise Long Beach beauty show so if anyone is planning to attend it as well and if you want to meet me feel free to contact me via instagram or with any other way you can find all the links below i left there my social webs links the links to nsiacademy.com like i said there are many things that are free just feel free to use them and to learn and to get motivated um and yes, I mean, just go for it. Don't have any fears or concerns. Don't let them, you know, keep you and, uh, you know, keep you from reaching your goals and dreams. I mean, we all have fears and concerns because we are humans and that's natural. And it's all about how you deal with it. Okay. And I, 
I mean, I'm a human also, and I have my own fears and concerns almost every day. And when I feel like, you know, I, oh my God, like I don't want to do it, I'm too scared or I'm too tired or anything else, I always try to focus on, you know, my goal and my dream. Like, but wait, on the other hand, I want this to happen. And also there's a, a tip, I don't really remember where I get it from, I think it was from some book, that if you think of doing something, like whether you should do it right now or not, just think about it in the terms of your long-term goals or in a few years. Um, let's say it's evening and I'm thinking, should I eat this ice cream right now or not? And then I think even, you know, just about a month. Well, if I will be one month away from this decision, I will probably recommend to myself back then, no, don't eat it. Just go to sleep and do a nice workout in the morning. Um, and, you know, it's the same for other things. Or, I'm so tired, actually, I want to go to sleep. Uh, I just feel like sitting on the couch. Or, okay, I really want to build my clientele, so I need to take the brush and practice more design so I'll have this, you know, um, color selector, I will have these examples of my designs for my clients. So I sit there and do it, and then I think, okay, in even one year, yes, I would definitely would love myself to do this instead of laying on the couch. So just think about every decision in terms of your goals and time. And I'm not saying that you should be like Robert, like don't sit on the couch, don't sleep, don't play with your kids, work, work, work all day long. Of course not. We also have to have rest and have fun. But um, just make sure you find a perfect balance between, you know, work, reaching your goals, and, you know, just having fun. Um, oh, okay. Said never to give anything for free. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for answering. I'll check out the site. Again, think, think again. I do think this is my calling. Awesome. Okay, guys, so you're a star. Thank you so much. Thank you, you so much, Zoe. And yes, I actually want to thank, thank you guys all because before starting this channel, I never felt confident enough just to speak English, especially to the public. I was like, oh, I have this accent and people will not understand me. And thanks to you, seriously, now I'm not afraid at all. I know I still make mistakes and can miss pronounce, misspell some words, but really I don't care anymore because I believe that, you know, it's not a problem. So thank you also so much and I look forward to seeing you on my new live streams and videos and many new exciting videos will be coming up soon and Thank you so much for joining. I'm wishing you the great rest of the day. And actually, it's Friday. Here's another good news. And a great weekend. And I'll see you soon. Bye.